What if we used our brains at full capacity? It might seem like a weird question, but how much time do you give your brain a fair consideration? Do you stop to marvel at its supreme cleverness and incredible power? That it's a giant electric muscle controlling your entire body? The brain is very complex. Scientists have studied it for centuries and are still learning more of its secrets today. But the search for facts can sometimes lead to fiction. Brain size relates more to proportion than it does to intelligence. Your brain is smaller than a whale's because your body is smaller. However, your brain is structured in a way that enables you to survive and succeed. The idea that we only use 10% of our brain is deeply entrenched in popular culture and often stated as fact in books and movies. But how true is it? And what about the other 90%? In this video, we're going to take a look at exactly how much of our brain we really use and what would happen if we used our brains at full capacity. Before we look at this, a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it and also to subscribe to Brain Impact for more videos just like this one. But now, back to the brain. The human brain consists of about 1 billion neurons. Each neuron forms about 1,000 connections to other neurons, amounting to more than a trillion connections. If each neuron could only help store a single memory, running out of space would be a problem. You might have only a few gigabytes of storage space, similar to the space in an iPhone or a USB flash drive. Yet, neurons combine so that each one helps with many memories at a time, considerably increasing the brain's memory storage capacity to something closer to around a million gigabytes. For comparison, if your brain worked like a digital video recorder in a television, one million gigabytes would be enough to hold three million hours of TV shows you would have to leave the TV running continuously for more than 300 years to use up all the storage. Some parts of your brain are working harder than others at any given time, but 90% of your brain isn't useless filler. The confusion that we only use 10% of our brain probably comes from the fact that our brain is made up of 10% neurons and 90% glial cells. There are different types of neurons that take care of different functions, but in general, your neurons enable you to process and transmit information, while your glial cells surround your neurons, providing them with support and insulation. Let's not forget your brain is what makes your lungs function, your heart beat, your digestive system work, and your blood circulate. You may be surprised to know that most people use the majority of their brain on a daily basis, but we do not know how each part of the brain actually works. Simple, menial activities only require us to engage a small portion of our brains. If you think of your kitchen as your brain, for example, when you cook dinner for a group of people, you probably use the majority of the space and appliances that you have. When you make toast, however, you use far fewer resources. So in mental toast cases, we often have no need to use the bulk of our brains. Positron emission tomography scans of brain activity show that widespread areas of the brain light up during even routine activities, indicating a high percentage of our brains are active during almost any cognitive task. Also, while studies sometimes show areas of the brain where neurons are not firing, neurologists point out that these neurons may in fact be busy receiving signals from other neurons, so it's possible that areas of the brain that appear to be inactive are in fact working. They're just on the receiving end. Neurologists have used electrical stimulation with local anesthetic on live human brains and found no dormant areas in the brain, areas which might be expected if only a small portion of the brain is being used. When it comes to memories, it's difficult to calculate the brain's exact storage capacity. First, we do not know how to measure the size of the memory. Second, certain memories involve more details and take up more space. Other memories are forgotten and so free up space. Additionally, some information is just not worth remembering in the first place. This is good news because our brain can help keep up as we seek new experiences over our lifetime. Although our brains are constantly being used, it doesn't mean you can't improve your brain. A well-balanced diet helps improve overall health as well as brain health. Eating right reduces the risk of developing health conditions that can lead to dementia. Foods like fruit and vegetables that are high in vitamin E and beta-carotene are good for the brain as well as walnuts and pecans which are rich in antioxidants. Omega-3 fatty acids that can be found in salmon, mackerel, and albacore tuna are also a good diet for the brain. Research also indicates that activities like crossword puzzles, chess, and deep reading can lower your risk of memory problems. Writing can also be a method of telling the memory what's important clarifying your thoughts, and helping you remember things more easily in the future. 
It goes without saying that sleep has a major impact on our brains. Sleep is similar to a mini detoxification for your brain. Sleep is similar to a mini detoxification for your brain. It's when the body regenerates cells as well as removes all the toxins which have built up during the day. So the question was, what if we used our brains at full capacity? The answer is, we do, but we just don't realize it. Brains are not just about the thought process. So try out that brain power and let us know what you think about the brain and how it works in the comments box. And please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.